In my last video, I showed you how I spent a day demoing a bathroom, tearing out the vanity, my backsplash, the mirror, toilet, and how to lay down a new floor. So in this video, I am putting everything back, showing you how I transformed this bathroom in just five days. Let me show you how I did it in case any of these projects are on your to-do list. Let's go ahead and start with replacing a toilet. You'll wanna to check the condition of the metal ring. If it's as degraded as mine, then it's worth replacing. I used my multi-tool to cut off the tabs attaching it, then used a pair of pliers to rip it up. It is very gross, so I recommend getting a plastic bag to avoid touching it. Pick it up just like a dog turd. Before setting down the new replacement ring, I used some floor scraps to build up the area it will sit in so that when I ran in screws, there wouldn't be a big void under it. Then the new ring, which was really cheap, can be set into place. The wax ring's primary job is to keep liquid out of anywhere other than the main pipe, but as a backup plan, you can also run a line of caulking around the inside of the seam of this ring. I'm using DAP's Dynaflex here. Now, the really important part, positioning this ring so that the toilet will line up straight. There are two slots on either side of this ring, and this is where the two bolts go that will hold the toilet down to the floor. If these aren't positioned straight, then neither will your toilet. Rotate the ring so that the bolts are 12 inches from the wall. Once they are, you can secure the ring to the floor. I used a few concrete anchors, pre-drilling with the bit that came with my anchors. Next, the wax ring can be set into place. And be careful not to misshape it as you're pulling it out of the new packaging. It retaining its shape is what will create the best seal between the toilet and the floor, which prevents leaking. Now, you might not need to replace your metal ring, but anytime you remove a toilet and replace it, you should also get a new wax ring. Now you can set the toilet on top. Again, to get the best seal, you wanna aim carefully so that you can place it once and not move it. Now, the bolts can get a washer and nut to secure it into place. All toilets come with a decorative cover to help hide the hardware here, so be sure to grab it before throwing out your box. Next, let's move on to hooking it up. If you're replacing your toilet, then it's only good maintenance to also replace the supply line. With that, I removed my old one by unthreading it, then threading on the new one. Before I could hook up the toilet, I had to attach the tank. You can do this by setting it into position, then using the hardware that comes with the packaging to tighten down on it. And I found it easiest to sit on the toilet backwards to do this, then place a screwdriver inside of the tank while threading on the nut on the underside. Now the supply line can be threaded on, then tightened down to the tank. At this point, you should be able to turn on the water to the toilet and watch as the tank starts filling up. If it starts leaking, then you need to tighten down on the bolts more. Alrighty, now that the toilet is in, let's move over to the big gaping hole I made when removing the backsplash. The best way to repair this is to open up the hole enough so that a new piece of drywall can be fitted into place. And you'll want the ends of the drywall to land on a stud. So I used my multi-tool to open it up a bit and then secured down a new piece. The next steps aren't as easy. Tape, mud, then texture needs to be added to make it disappear and match the existing wall texture. I've done this once before, but honestly, I'm not that good at it. So I asked my employee, Jacob, to come in here and knock it out for me. With a little bit of paint, that old backsplash is just a memory. Real quick, I wanna thank this video's sponsor, which is Policy Genius. If someone relies on your financial support, whether it's a child, an aging parent, or even a business partner, then you need life insurance. This is where you need Policy Genius. They make it easy to compare quotes from over a dozen top insurers all in one place. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. And eligible applicants can get covered in as little as a week thanks to award-winning policy option rated number one by Forbes. I personally have seen my parents and grandparents benefit from life insurance, allowing them to withstand the cost of funerals and mortgages. Just head over to policygenius.com slash April to get started. And in minutes, you can work out how much coverage you need and compare personalized quotes to find your best price. You could save $1,300 or more per year on life insurance by using Policy Genius to compare policies. So head to policygenius.com slash April to start comparing quotes and simplify insurance buying. Big thank you to Policy Genius for supporting what I do. Now let's move down to installing the new vanity. Now you can definitely just rip out the old vanity and put in the new one. However, in my situation, the plumbing is the original plumbing installed in the house, which is 20 years old. With that, I'm gonna take the opportunity to update my plumbing. First, I need to replace the valves. My fittings are so corroded and stuck on, I simply cut mine off. 
And they make different cutting tools, but I found this ultra compact one that made getting in this tight spot very simple. You latch on to the pipe and keep turning until it breaks all the way through. You wanna cut off as little as possible. And you can also keep a trash can near to catch the water left in the pipes. I'm replacing the valves with a fitting. You take the back nut off the fitting, being careful not to lose the bushing inside. Then you can slip the nut into the pipe, followed by this bushing. I smeared a little plumber's tape on the pipe. Then the rest of the fitting can be shoved onto the pipe. Once you fill the fitting seat all the way onto that bushing and nut, you simply have to tighten down on the nut. As you tighten down, this will apply pressure to the bushing inside, which will in turn squeeze down onto the pipe. They call this a compression fitting. The top port will be where the new supply lines connect to. So as you're positioning the fittings, make sure that they are pointed upwards towards where the sink will be. And that's what I did next. I grabbed my new supply lines and threaded them onto the top port. Okay, let's go to move in the vanity. When buying a new one, you need to measure your old one and measure your space because while they are standard sizes, they have a few. My new one was just barely too wide to fit through my opening with the door on, so I took the door off the hinges. And a quick way to do this is to pop the pin out instead of unscrewing the hinges. Then turning the vanity on its side, I was able to slide it into the room. And <laughs> just barely. You can see there is a large opening in the back of the vanity that goes around all the plumbing. Once it was all the way up against the wall, Terry also helped me move in the new countertop that came with the vanity. And note, I think it's easiest to install the faucet and sink and then move it in as one big unit. You can apply some silicone to the top side of the vanity, then set the countertop right into place. After a high five from Terry, he went on his way and I finished up all the final plumbing to complete this portion of the revamp. Since I have a condensation line from my attic to the sink, I kept my old sink stem since it already had this offshoot, and then I reconnected my black tube to it. Then I connected each new supply line from the wall up to the sink. It's a little dark in here, so I used a flashlight on my phone pointed upwards to give myself a little better light to work with. Once the supply lines are connected, the last thing to connect is the sink's drain to the pipe in the wall. And you can buy kits from any big box store to make up this arrangement. Then you just need to piece it together to fit your exact setup. Mostly the vertical pipe that connects to the main draining line needs to be cut to the proper length so that it fits on the P-trap that comes out from the wall. Once it pops together, I just needed to tighten down on all the nuts and I was done. At this point, I checked for leaks. To do this, I laid down some cardboard so a leak would be obvious. I turned the water back onto the house and opened up the ball valves. After not seeing any leaks, I did a second test. I filled up the sink all the way full and then released the entire tank at the same time. And this is to see if it can handle a full load of water. With no leak showing, even after a full hour, I patted myself on the back and moved on. Next, I moved up to replacing the light fixture. Updating a light fixture is one of the easiest updates you can make, honestly. You'll wanna kill the breaker to the light, then unscrew it from the wall. Either unscrew the wire nuts or cut them off so that you can remove the light fixture base. Then you can rewire the black to black and white to white. Then screw the new fixture in its place. You can see in my situation, the old fixture had a much wider footprint. So this just means I need to fill in the holes and paint the wall. But that's still an easy job for such a drastic change. Now I'll go ahead and get started on the mirror. Since I plan to paint my frame, I grabbed any one by boards that I had in my shop and started cutting 45 degree angles on the sides. And note, you can do this two ways. You can either build the frame with the recess on the back so the mirror will sit inside the frame, or you can build the frame directly on top of the mirror. With my mirror being so large, I wasn't upset about killing some of the usable space. So I went the easier route and went directly on top of mine. After cutting all the boards to the correct length, I glued and attached them together. And then I very quickly gave everything a coat of paint. Once it was dry, I flipped it over and also painted the inside edge all around the perimeter. And this is because once you set the frame on the mirror, the reflection will actually show about an inch on the back side. And so if it isn't painted, you're gonna be able to see it. Also keep that in mind when you go to glue the frame to the mirror. The adhesive needs to be away from the back edge by about an inch or you're gonna see it in the reflection. But then I flipped it over and set it into place. I applied a bunch of squeeze clamps to apply pressure while that dried. After it was, to hang the mirror, I used my stud finder to locate a few studs. I specifically was looking for two. 
Then I drilled in these special hangers labeled mirror holders. I found a pack at the big box store. They have a metal U shape that will typically cup the mirror. But since I built out the thickness of mine with the frame, I had to use a chisel to knock out a slot for this cup to rust in. Once you lift the mirror into place on these two bottom hooks, then the top can be secured with the counterpart that came in the hardware package. And boom, this entire section of the bathroom is completely redone. Okay, and now the final piece of this bathroom remodel, updating the shower. This is typically a huge process where you have to remove the tile, redo the backer board, then apply whatever new product you're going with. However, I'm using a product called Wet Wall made by Wilson Art, and it's something you can put directly over your existing tile. This is a patented project that you can't get anywhere else. It comes in panels that you can cut just like wood, but it's composite that is 100% waterproof. I'm going with the veining design, but they have multiple colors and designs to choose from. And the concept is to cut, then place the back wall of the shower first. So I first removed the towel rack, the soap dish, and the valve and faucet. As you can see, my tile only comes to this far. I'm gonna go ahead and extend it all the way up to the ceiling, but that means I need to build up this material where it's just drywall to be the same thickness as this tile. So I'm gonna put down some wooden uh, back, backing boards to that way whenever I come back over with my wet wall tile, I have something to attach to instead of it being floppy up here. So you just gotta grab a stud finder, mark, find and mark your stud locations, and now you can attach your wooden boards to build out this section. I applied wooden battens on the other two walls, then moved in the back panel. And you definitely want a hand moving in the large sheet. It isn't that it's heavy, it's just big and awkward. It's also worth noting that I ordered mine in one large sheet, but you can also get this in tongue and groove. This option is great if you're working with stairs or another tight spot where a panel won't get in. I use the proprietary caulking from Wilson Art, which comes with the DIY kit. And if you're tackling this project, know that there is a kit. You want to stay two inches in on all sides. So I ran a horizontal line on the top and bottom, then a vertical line every 12 inches in between. How have I never discovered an electric caulking gun? That tool is a game changer. It is a large panel and I did have the valve to work around, but David and I were able to easily get it in with taking our time and working around the obstacles. This stuff sets up in about 10 minutes, so I used my body to make sure it was pressed up against the tile and the wooden battens firmly, then called it good. And it's okay to have a gap on the sides. In fact, you need a small gap in order to get the panel in, but the side panels go in afterwards and cover up everything. Then in the seam, you use a color match sealant to make it look seamless. I mean, tell me that's not the coolest. This stuff has an antimicrobial protection and also a proprietary scratch and scuff resistant technology. But the best part is it only took two and a half hours from start to finish, which honestly blows my mind. I thought this was definitely gonna be the longest part of the whole project, but I think it was, I think it was the vanity. I'll leave you a link down below if you're interested in finding a dealer of what wall near you. And that's it, five days guys, that's all it took me in order to start demoing it to the now what you see it. Not only is it fun seeing a complete overhaul, but it also, I didn't do, I've never done a lot of these things before. I've never replaced a toilet and I've never replaced a vanity or even the, the plumbing. Definitely never redone shower tiling with uh, those wet wall panels. So I really hope that watching my experience has helped you out, maybe gave you a few chuckles and hopefully a few good tips that you can put into your own bathroom remodel project. That's it for this one. I will see you on whatever I'm tackling next. Over down. <laughs> if you are looking for some great sawhorse plans, then I have a link for you right here for this one, as well as two other variations. This one's cheap, it's sturdy, it's very quick to put together, and the thing that I like the best is that it's foldable. And it's collapsible.